Hello, welcome to Desert Island Retro. This video is about a game called Streaks of Rogue. This is a PC game, it is a Steam Early Access game, but it is as retro as you're going to get for this time of the morning. This game is very much like Grand Theft Auto, the original. The original Grand Theft Auto was a top-down game where you controlled a little guy running around stealing cars and causing mayhem. The difference between this and that version of Grand Theft Auto is there are no cars in this game, however there is a city that you control, you run round, you destroy and you inflict as much pain and damage as you can on everybody around you. This is the character select screen. There are multiple characters that you can pick from, they unlock as you progress in the game. The first one that you'll open is Slum Dweller and then from then onwards you can unlock the werewolf, the griller, the vampire, the ninja and so forth. If you don't like those characters, you can define your own character as you can see with the bald guy on the bottom left of the screen. Each character has a set of stats, traits and starting items for each particular game you play. This is a great little game. Everything in this game is truly randomised from the city layout to the quests that you have. No game is the same and with the variety of characters that you have open to you, you truly have something that you can pick up and play for a few minutes at a time and know that you're going to have a fun experience and a different experience on each time you enter one of the cities. We're now entering the city and we're going to be playing as a ninja. You've just seen it generating the floor and that floor again is random. A brief little sign, welcome to the city, try and have some good clean and wholesome fun. You just know that is not going to be true. The mini map of the game is on the top right hand side of the screen. The entrance is at the bottom and the exit is at the top. Missions are represented by red arrows for medium difficulty, blue arrows for easy difficulty and the not shown purple arrows for a much harder difficulty. On some maps there will be a little icon with the legend M. That is an NPC character that will also be able to give you additional missions. The mission that you are watching at the moment, your objective is to neutralize this character, i.e. kill him. When you complete this, you are given a mission reward which is one of a series of random things, objects generally, that will be passed across to you and then what you need to do is clear up any remaining hostiles that are still attacking you. If you don't, they will pursue you across the map. You will have just seen our little ninja guy get shot by an arrow. You can get various traits when you complete a level if you have enough experience points and one of the traits he could have would have been graceful. This would have allowed him to pass across the pressure point without triggering the weapon. Other bonuses that you can have are not seen by security cameras. If you start off with a vampire character, he has this ability by default, so any cameras that are pointing on you do not trigger, thus not setting off the alarm or any weapon which may be able to shoot at you. What is great about this game is that everybody likes to get involved. You saw me attack the character that was behind all the policemen, and then all the police get involved and start fighting me at this point. Some levels have giant robots that will attack you, other levels have riots, so if you're out on the street it's constantly rioting. Other levels have locks down, locked down by police. There are all kinds of different starting variables that can change the nature of each level and effectively the outcome of each playthrough. You just saw us dying. We're going to have a go again with a different character. This time we will pick the investment banker. One thing you will have noticed, perhaps if you're eagle-eyed on the death that just happened, just before the final blow, the ninja jumped to another part of the screen. That would have been one of his traits. I guess it's escape just before death. You have one chance to move away and not get yourself killed. Stupidly, I went back for a little bit more, which brought an end to the level, an end to the ninja's life. Playing as a banker is a prime example of how different characters start off with different equipment. Look here you'll see that I've got 300 pieces of gold to begin with. My first mission seems to be to have to kill the bartender. Why? I don't know. Perhaps I could just buy him out, but that isn't one of the options in the game. 
What you will also see as this mission continues is the wanton destruction. There is a power type generator you hit a couple of times. You can just blow up and cause wreckage and carnage absolutely everywhere. The levels of the game are basically designed for destruction and as open world as you can get in a random generated level. Here I'm going to attack the fire extinguishers. I noticed on one of the hints earlier on in the game it said put out 10 fires and if you can do this you will unlock the fireman character. I've not seen these fire extinguishers before. This game is very regularly updated and new features, new items, new quests are added all the time. We're now going to go and mess about with one more fire extinguisher before having an attempt on the final mission. This should be a medium type mission by the red arrow on the top right hand side of the map. This is going to be a rescue mission. One of the best ways to approach these missions is to actually run around the entire outside of the building then you can see what components, what enemies you are up against. These enemies will range from bad guys with clubs, force fields, cameras that when triggered set off an alarm or shoot you with poison darts, pressure points on the floor that can open trap doors and cause all kinds of other things to happen to you. Basically survey your surroundings and you'll be best positioned to approach this from perhaps a, a safe point of view. Police lockdown, why are you outside? This is what you're now seeing on the screen and on the prior clip I did not survey my surroundings correctly and I died. As the levels progress you have new features that are added within the game. This feature is going to be a town which doesn't have many people walking the streets but it does have police walking the streets and a lot of angry policemen as well. This is level 1-3 of the slums. As the game progresses you move through various zones with a variety of different levels which form part of the overall larger sector. Again everything is completely random in here. What you should be seeing is the level of violence has escalated from the earlier levels that you were having a look at and this game really does give you a run for your money. Don't let the first levels be an illusion that oh yes you can just walk this because no you can't. I'm not particularly good at computer games but one game that I am reasonably good at is this. It's a brilliant little retro game and it has so many ways to attack problems. I feel that you're playing a, a human version of the original Grand Theft Auto as mentioned before with no cars plus Hitman from an overhead view. You can define your own characters, set your own characters up on custom design to be exactly how you want and that just gives you multiple ways to approach a problem, approach an issue and deal with it. The character that you're having a look at now is called Reg, he is a vampire. If you sneak up behind people when your health is low you can chomp on your neck and basically refill your life with their blood. He cannot eat burgers, he cannot eat other food, this is the only way that his life can be fully restored or if he levels up during the course of an actual mission. When you have completed all available missions on the floor and assuming that you don't select one of the extra ones which is sometimes defined by an NPC with the character M above it, you can then head towards the exit of the game. When you hit the exit you have a brief stat screen that appears telling you exactly what you did on the floor, how many kills you had and how well you behaved and if you've scored enough points and your XP has gone up you have an option to give yourself a new trait, a new skill. Always keep an eye on what is happening around you. As you can see here the NPCs have been fighting each other which for the purpose of this level is actually a benefit because it reduces the amount of footprint that the police have on the street and leaves you maybe just a couple to deal with on your own. Do not rush headlong into battle, the likelihood is you will lose. Once the battle is complete, assuming you survived, you can then exit the level. We do survive this level and we move on into the industrial zone. I'm going to show a very brief clip of this and then we're going to fade to nothing which is going to bring us to the end of this video and also the end of the demonstration 
of Streets of Rogue. The reason I'm ending this a little prematurely here is I don't want to give away any spoilers for further parts of this game. This is a brilliant little game and allow self-discovery to allow you to find your own experience and have the wonder of, hey, this is cool, I've never seen this before. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and also subscribe. Have a great day.